Hello, my name is Manji Mateo. I'm the founder of interpretmed.com and today I'll talk to you about how to use ChatGPT for medical interpreter terminology. So keep watching. You may have heard about ChatGPT on social media and may be left wondering what is this newfangled ChatGPT and why is everyone so polarized about it all of a sudden? So what is ChatGPT really? ChatGPT is a language model developed by OpenAI that uses machine learning to generate responses to text inputs. Essentially, it's a chatbot that can converse with you in natural language. However, unlike other chatbots that rely on pre-written scripts or fixed responses, ChatGPT can generate unique human-like responses based on the context of a conversation. The idea of chatbots is not new. In fact, they are one of the most popular types of artificial intelligence. For example, many companies use chatbots to provide customer support. If not, just remember the last time you were texting a chatbot from your bank or a company telling it, please talk to a representative very furiously or angrily. So what makes ChatGPT different from that kind of chatbots is its advanced AI architecture, which is called Generative Pre-trained Transformer, GPT. To, and they use it to create more natural human-like responses and engage more effectively in conversation. So you may already know that searching for the most appropriate translation of a medical term is an important but often time-consuming task. While ChatGPT cannot replace this kind of research, it can cut back some research time. Imagine that you are in one of our live interpreting practice sessions with other interpreter members. While you and your peers are working on interpreting one of our original consecutive practice scripts, you encounter two frequently confused terms, sprain and strain. You have the right answer on the tip of your tongue, but can't really remember it. So you decide to do a quick ChatGPT search to refresh your knowledge. ChatGPT will very articul articulately, you see, <laughs> explain the following. A sprain is, and a strain are both common injuries that can occur in muscles and joints, but they are different in terms of which part of the body is affected. A sprain refers to an injury to a ligament. On the other hand, a strain refers to an injury to a muscle or tendon. These are answers straight out of ChatGPT. So it's not bad at all. If you're feeling curious, you can also ask ChatGPT simple follow-up questions such as what are the typical treatments or diagnose, diagnostic tests for sprains and strains. And it's going to give you an answer based on the medical information on its database that's being curated with articles, journals, etc. And as of today, it doesn't contain any information past September 2021. So that's something to keep in mind as well. But remember this, ChatGPT cannot replace medical libraries like MSD manuals, Mayo Clinic or Medline Plus that we like so much. So it might be helpful to think of ChatGPT as an AI power search assistant. Uh, and that is just another tool in your toolbox. At worst, ChatGPT sounds can give you very confident answers in giving you while giving you inaccurate information. So just like anything we search on Google, we cannot take the information we see at face value. So a healthy dose of skepticism and critical thinking will go a long way in seizing ChatGPT's advantages. Now, imagine that you're practicing simultaneous interpretation with one of our recorded monologues. You come across a colloquial term for which you only know the formal translation. Although you interpreted the term's meaning correctly, you still feel like there is a better way to express it using the same register as the speaker, or maybe you're just curious to know other possible translations. 
ChatGPT can help you solve this kind of linguistic puzzle. So, for example, if I wanted to find idiomatic ways of saying sprain or strain, I can use the following prompt. Give me 10 idiomatic phrases for sprain and strain in the US. And it will retrieve the following um, answers. To pull a muscle, to tear a muscle, overdo it, etc. and others. So, reviewing this variety of phrases can be not only fun, but also incredibly helpful in expanding your vocabulary within multiple registers, from the colloquial and everyday speech that you hear patients use to the very technical jargon that providers or professionals use. It's all in one quick itemized list. So keep in mind that ChatGPT doesn't take into account important context clues, such as the purpose and location of the message. It doesn't take this into account by default. So it's best practice to write very explicitly in your prompts as if you were uh, writing instructions to a very, very dumb machine. So here, for example, I can say, give me 10 most commonly used slang in US English that means to wake up early. You are a rural and witty 17 year old from the south of the United States in 2020. So you can have fun and try your best reading the following phrases ChatGPT uh, retrieved. So I'll try my best Southern accent, but please don't make fun of me. You can also do it after me. So rise and grind. Uh, let's see. Um, time to rise and grind, you all. Gotta tackle the day head on. That's how the Southern people sound like to me. <laughs> but um, you can give it a try, pause the video if you want, and have some fun with these phrases. Of course, these are just a few examples of Southern slang, and by no means is an exhaustive list, as individuals have their own preferences, um, but it's certainly a great start into idioms. So I want you to note how specific I was in my prompt, including age, 17 years old, the year, the English variation, rural versus, um, you know, uh, English from the city, frequency, how the most commonly used uh, phrases. So these are contextual elements you want to specify to ChatGPT to consider in its response. So like I said before, if you are trying to look for new, uh, very recent phrases, it may not be helpful because ChatGPT has only been trained until September 2021. So let's say you have finished your medical interpreting practice session. You and your peers are ready to wrap up the meeting. But before you set a date and time to work on the next medical interpreter dialogue at InterpreMed, you want to save a list of medical terms that were especially challenging for you. If you like keeping digital glossaries or printing glossaries, this can also be very helpful for you. Ima so this, imagine these were the terms you found more challenging. Um, herniated disc, heating pad, corticosteroid, etc. Uh, you can prompt ChatGPT to create a table using your specific parameters. In this picture, this is a table ChatGPT generated to the following prompt. Create a table with the following words, the ones you can see on the screen and I specify the, the type of column. The first column is a term from the list and the name is English term. For the second column, leave the cells blank and title that column Spanish translation. The third column is title definition and you'll add a brief definition of the term in English. So I have to specify very clearly uh, without ambiguity what kind of table do I want? And ChatGPT will generate that for me. You can easily copy paste this um, list, this table to your preferred terminology management program or system. I like to use Google Spreadsheets, but you're free to use the method or program you're most comfortable with. So 
Lastly, confidentiality and privacy are usually forgotten due to the appeal of these digital tools making our lives so much easier. But it's important to keep in mind that ChatGPT can and does disclose the content of your messages to third-party vendors, after which you have no control over how the information you share is used. For this reason, you must refrain from sharing private information about clients or patients you work with to comply not only with the ethical principle of confidentiality, but also with HIPAA laws in the United States. And I want you to I want you to, to think about this. A phrase has really become popular uh, in the last couple of months because many linguists have a fear that AI is going to replace us and take our jobs. So this is a, my message for you. AI will not replace you. Someone who uses AI will replace you. So I leave the link to sign up for ChatGPT on the description together with our registration link to access our live interpreting practice sessions, um, study guides and practice materials for medical and educational interpretation. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to receive notifications when we post the next one. And until the next time, bye.